Okay, it's uh, Anzac, observed Anzac Day in New Zealand here today, and we're still on lockdown, so not much we can do uh, except around the house, and uh, what better things can do but, uh, you know, go to the, uh, the, the Center for Disease Control in the United States and take a look at their uh, data for what's going on with the current flu season, the flu and pneumonia season. This is the um, uh, CDC's own website. You can see here, uh, gis.cdc.gov. That's the official data of the United States government, Center for Disease Control. Um, this is, you know, population 330 million people. Uh, see what the data looks like. Uh, this is for the whole country, week ending week 16 of the flu season. Flu season runs in the United States from November 1st to October 31st. Most of the flu peaks occur somewhere around uh, January, February, and they're usually, the season's pretty much over by the end of April, early May. Um, you can see here, this uh, red area means that the CDC considers the whole country to be in uh, at epidemic level, meaning that it's spread across, the, the flu and pneumonia deaths are spread across the whole country. Um, the epidemic level is represented by this nice little sine wave, this little black line here represents uh, anything over that black line is epidemic uh, level, anything under is below epidemic. You can see that the, the, the <laughs> for flu and pneumonia, it almost never really goes below the epidemic. The CDC considers uh, flu and pneumonia to be an epidemic pretty much every year, um, which is why they have flu shots. Um, okay, so that's the national. You can see here 2017, 2018 uh, is definitely a spike uh, in the last few years. This is all a modeling. So the, the, the chart here, I should say, is a percentage of flu and pneumonia deaths uh, versus to total all deaths. Um, but these are modeling. You know, the data in the United States is not, you know, not every hospital reports every single piece of data of everybody that dies. And there's people that die at home and all these other and rest homes. And the death certificates don't always say what's um, the cause of death or there's a, you know, doctors and have a choice between what they want to put down as a cause of death, so the CDC builds models. Uh, so this might represent only 10 or 20 percent of the actual data, and then they model the rest to get to their projections. The 2017-2018 numbers uh, that you see the spike there for, uh, that percentage of, of flu deaths spike there is based on a total number of flu and pneumonia deaths, and pneumonia is really much larger than um, uh, Flu and influenza, uh, pneumonia is always higher than uh, influenza. You can see here the influenza deaths, you know, 115, 380, 408. Uh, and then the pneumonia deaths are always substantially higher. So um, the COVID deaths are in the pneumonia category. And um, uh, where are we going there? Okay, yeah. So, so that's what we track. Uh, so it's 2017, 2018. Uh, originally, they, they, the models projected a total of 80,000 deaths. Uh, that was uh, about six to eight months after the season ended. Uh, it was in September of 2018. The news reports in the United States, uh, you know, they had stories in the Washington Post and other places, you know, uh, what a horrible, you know, what a bad flu year it was. We had 80,000 deaths. Uh, CDC estimated 80,000 deaths. Well, the 80,000 number got reduced down to 60,000 by now. So they, you know, they had to adjust the model based on some additional inputs or research into the, how the model was working. So this number here you see is based on a total of 60,000 deaths occurring during that 2017-18 season, and we're comparing to what's happening uh, this year. Now what's interesting though is um, if we go up here and we go by state, oh, hang on, let's go back to national for a second. Let's do age first, because that's interesting. So if you go by age, that's all, you go 65 and older, you know, not much difference. The chart almost looks identical. 18 to 64, chart almost looks identical. You go on the 18, below 18. So, you know, this would, you know, 19, 20, 21 year olds, you can imagine they're somewhere close to the 18 number, under 18 number. Um, you see here that there's actually, um, you know, nothing's going on different this year. This happened in last year's. So for all those uh, high school and college kids that are out on the beaches partying, um, their chances of death from what they're doing is actually uh, no different than previous years. 
Um, however, they could be spreading the disease to all the other people that might be affected. So that would be the impact there. Okay, so let's go back to states and see how we can break it down. So the state data is interesting. It's highlighting on North Carolina here. North Carolina is um, slow in getting their data in. They're about three to four weeks behind the rest, of, most of the rest of the states in the country. For some reason, the uh, I don't know if it's the uh, the accountants of the hospitals just aren't working as hard in North Carolina, but um, their data always lags the rest of the country, or the rest of the states. But let's take a look at um, California, the country's largest state. Um, here's 2017, 2018. And compared to this season, you know, the, the, the breadth of the, the, the width of the, of the season might be wider, but as far as a peak and the total number of deaths, it might not be actually, uh, when it's all said and done, might not be much different. Again, these numbers are through April 18th, which backing up about four weeks when the lockdown started in the United States. Um, if you were dying uh, last week or this week, um, you would have contracted the disease um, uh, and then had it incubate and kill you. Uh, sometime you would have contracted the disease sometimes before the lockdown um, procedures started to come into place. So it's really from here on out that there might be some effect of the lockdowns. But anyway, California, the largest uh, uh, economy in the United States, um, something like at least, I don't know, 10, 15 percent or more of the economy. Uh, Texas is uh, another big one. Uh, together, I think those two are somewhere around 30% of the GDP of the United States. And you can see Texas here also. Um, you know, this year it was actually, you know, total number of deaths is probably no different than 2017-18, which, you know, nobody remembers hearing about, you know, wondering whether we should shut the country down in the United States um, for the 2017-2018 year. Um, if you go through the whole center of the country, Oklahoma, See no difference. Kansas, Nebraska, these numbers almost don't count. South Dakota, North Dakota. If you look at the number of deaths, it's you know almost you know uh, uh, with an experimental error. <laughs> uh, Minnesota, no difference. Iowa, Missouri, the Show Me State. They're showing that it's no different than it was in 2017-18. Arkansas, you know less. Um, going through here. Mississippi a little higher. There's now the, what's causing the numbers to spike across the whole country is just a few key areas in the country, some very localized regions. Florida has more definitely here, and that's a hot spot in Miami area, which is quite a big uh, inner, you know transit hub for everything coming. From, you know, people around the world come through Miami. It's quite a, a big destination. Um, Georgia has a hot spot. Uh, it's not too different than it was in 2017-18, but the hot spot in Atlanta, a uh, major city, is definitely driving that number there. Um, but the biggest, by far, outlier of the whole country is New York State, which is why I see the governor on TV almost every day, uh, or every day. And a huge spike there versus even 2017-18. And that spike in New York is being driven. There's two areas of the country the CDC breaks out to for special um, this is every year, not just this year, but um, they, for whatever reason, they specifically track the District of Columbia, which is a tiny area, but happens to include Washington, D.C. So, you know, I want to know how the politicians are doing. They're seeing about the same impact that they saw in 2017-18. But New York City, that's driving the New York number, is way off the charts, uh, far and away. And that is driving up the number, not just for New York State, but for the whole country. Um, those areas, again, Miami, New York City... New Jersey, which most of the population population lives across the river from New York, um, that is also a huge spike. So that local region there, New York City, New Jersey, uh, is a huge spike. Uh, said Florida, Atlanta, and then Michigan is another spike, and that's uh, uh, three counties all right around the city of Detroit, and uh, that's driving that number up there. So outside of those areas, though, the rest of the country is pretty much the same or doing better than it did in 2017-18. So, um, you know, basically, uh, you know, that's the data uh, direct from the federal government. They, they do reserve the right to change it over the next coming months. And it'll be interesting to look at what happens in the next few weeks. But that's the way it is uh, as of Anzac Day uh, 2020. Take care.